I know these Catholics aren't literally saying like something threatening. And I know that they would never think it within reason to go and like hurt people like with malicious intent. But the dilemma is that ultimately the way you vote is going to impact people horribly, whether intentional or not. And they might not look at it intentionally. Truly, when they take away your civil rights as a woman or as a gay, they don't do it maliciously. They think they're helping you. That's why I say the road to hell is paved in good intentions. People who think they're genuinely helping you will be your downfall. They will be the first people to betray you. Judas, as a metaphor, had the best intentions for Jesus. He thought he knew better than him. Talk about staying in your own lane. Catholics need to stay in their own lane and let the gays live their lives. The commitment speech by Harrison Butker. So this guy is a football player, but he is also making the speech at a Catholic college. So right away when I saw it was a Benedictine college, I was like, wait a second. We're hopping into the Catholic bubble. You guys know I was raised Catholic. I'm an not a Catholic now, I'm an atheist, but I know a lot about Catholicism. And what I especially know is that they're conservative and they like modesty and stay at home moms and all of these other things. So I now in context am going into this completely differently because when I initially heard the news, I thought this was a secular college. This is a Catholic college. So let's go ahead and watch and try to recognize that not everyone's culture is our culture. Ladies and gentlemen of the class of 2024, First of all, gray beard right out the gate, handsome fella. He's a place kicker for the Kansas City Chiefs. His name is Harrison, and this is Benedict College. I would like to start off by congratulating all of you for successfully making it to this achievement today. I'm sure your high school graduation was not what you had imagined, and most likely, neither was your first couple years of college. By making it to this moment through all the adversity thrown your way from COVID, I hope you learned the important lessons that suffering in this life is only temporary. Mm. As a group, you witnessed firsthand how bad leaders who don't stay in their lane can have a negative impact on society. It is through this lens that I want to take stock of how we got to where we are and where we want to go as citizens and, yes, as Catholics. You see, last year I gave the commencement address at my alma mater, Georgia Tech, and I felt that one graduation speech was more than enough, especially for someone who isn't a professional speaker. But, of course, President Minist used his gift of persuasion <laughs> and spoke to the many challenges you all faced throughout the COVID fiasco and how you missed out on so many milestones the rest of us older people have taken for granted. While COVID might have played a large role throughout your formative years, it is not unique. Bad policies and poor leadership have negatively impacted major life issues. So obviously he's going to take the more conservative route and he's going to speak from that conservative, you know, bubble and he's speaking to a conservative bubble. So everything he's going to be saying will make sense within this bubble. And to be fair, Catholics do think Catholicism is the only way. And they do want everyone to be Catholic. Like Muslims don't believe in converts. They believe in reverts. They think you're all born to be Muslim. Catholics are also similar in a way where they think you're all meant to find Christ, whether you do or not, which is why we need to learn to like live together without making sure we're forcing people to be the same. Really, you know what I mean? So regardless if you're Muslim or Catholic, it's pretty common for them to think everyone should be like them. But he's in his space, in his bubble, speaking to his people, right? This kind of a speech already wouldn't have flown in a more secular college, like already, and we're a minute 30 in, right? Things like abortion, IVF. Right there, there we go, woo. Surrogacy, euthanasia, as well as a growing support for degenerate cultural values and media all stem from the pervasiveness of disorder. This is the most Catholic speech I've ever heard in my life. This is like so conservative 101, right? So already he's making it pretty clear this isn't for us, okay? Which is totally fine. I wonder why the media thought this had anything to do with them. You know what I mean? Like why are we mad at this guy for going into his bubble and speaking his way unless, you know, he has some goal to like forcefully push everyone in a direction, right? Then that's a problem. Our own nation is led by a man who publicly and proudly proclaims his Catholic faith, but at the same time is delusional enough to make the sign of the cross during a pro-abortion rally. He has been so vocal in his support for the murder of innocent babies that I'm sure to many people, it appears that you can be both Catholic and pro-choice. He is not alone. From the man behind the COVID lockdowns to the people pushing dangerous gender ideologies onto the youth of America, mm. Yo, am I at a family dinner right now? Yo, mom, is that you? <laughs> they all have a glaring thing in common. 
they are Catholic. This is an important reminder. To be fair, you know, that is a very difficult thing to do. It is very difficult to be religious and to live and let live because your religion often tells you that your way is the only way, that everybody else is wrong. And Catholics are not exempt from that. Like Catholics really think their way is the best way. So, you know, it's just one one of those things where I don't, I, it obviously doesn't work in a diverse world, but that's probably why Catholics don't exactly like that kind of diversity, right? And he says, so interesting how Catholics are so focused on life and talking about abortion, euthanasia, coming from a Muslim bubble where everyone opposes abortion, but the topic isn't talked about much. Yeah, Catholics are talkers. I used to go to Catholic like protests. I used to do I used to do abortion pro-life rallies. Guys, in my youth, I went to pro-life rallies and defended the life of the unborn child. And in my 20s, volunteered for Planned Parenthood. So it came full circle, you know. That being Catholic alone doesn't cut it. These are the sorts of things we are told in polite society to not bring up. You know, the difficult and unpleasant things. But if we are going to be men and women for this time in history, we need to stop pretending that the Church of Nice is a winning proposition. Mm. We must always speak and act in charity. But mm, that felt like a threat a little bit. It felt a little bit like a threat. Just like a little bit. He, see, he says we should speak in charity. And that's the only problem. This is, this is, my mom probably loved this speech. My dad probably was like, yes, king speaking. You know what I mean? Which I love. Like, see how we love my family? But this is exactly what it's like going to dinner with my family. They're so great. They're so great. I would fight the world, get, you know, for my family. But this is what it's like. And it doesn't get easier. It's not like they stop talking. I love you. Don't vote pro-choice. I love you. Don't vote for Biden. I love you. Don't vote for the gays. And I'm like, mm-hmm. Love you too. Bye. but never mistake charity for cowardice. It is safe to say that over the past few years, I've gained quite the reputation for speaking my mind. I never envisioned myself nor wanted to have this sort of a platform, but God has given it to me, so I have no other choice but to embrace it and preach more hard truths about accepting your lane and staying in it. As members of the church founded by Jesus Christ, it is our duty and ultimately privilege to be authentically and unapologetically Catholic. Don't be mistaken, even, with, even within the church, people in polite Catholic circles will try to persuade you to remain silent. There even was an award-winning film called Silence, made by a fellow Catholic, wherein one of the main characters, a Jesuit priest, abandoned the church and as an apostate, when he died, is seen grasping a crucifix, quiet and unknown to anyone but God. As a friend of Benedictine College, His Excellency Bishop Robert Barron said in his review of the film, it was exactly what the cultural elite want to see in Christianity, private, hidden away, and harmless. Our Catholic faith has always been countercultural. Our Lord, along with countless followers, were all put to death for their adherence to her teachings. The world around us says that we should keep our beliefs to ourselves whenever they go against the tyranny of diversity, equity, and inclusion. We fear speaking truth because now, unfortunately, truth is in the minority. Congress just passed a bill where stating something as basic as the biblical teaching of who killed Jesus could land you in jail. Um, this got anti-Semitic really fast. <laughs> what? Is that an anti-Semitic statement? Yo, the Catholics be crazy over here. What is this? What did he just say? What did he just say? Okay, so obviously bubble truths. He goes, we have the truth. We're the only ones who have the truth. Nobody has the truth. What you have is like your perception of the truth, right? That's what you have. You have the perception of your truth. That's all anybody ever has. It's one of those things where all my life Catholics were so, they always just felt like they were the most persecuted. They are the most attacked. They have the it the hardest. Everyone feels like that. Everyone always feels like they have it the hardest. Their group has it the hardest. Listen, being a human is hard enough without all of you pretending like you're suffering the most. Okay, whether you're men, women, black, white, Catholic, Muslim, please everybody slow down. Nobody suffers the most. And yet, we could probably figure out who does, depending on how we're counting the or the suffering, right? The So again, mm, so bubbled is what it is. How do we live in a world with each other? How do we actually get along if they think they have the only truth? 
If they literally think anything outside of their bubble isn't true, how do we learn to get along? How are we supposed to live in the world together? Sometimes I feel like their rhetoric is screaming for them to be attacked. Like sometimes I wonder, do you hear yourself? You're threatening the world in your own weird way. And I don't know why you're doing that. Why can't we just get along and live together? Why are you talking about how like you're the only one, the truth and the the, the liars and the, the leader trying to silence you? Like, girl, you're the one who believes in a God that has no evidence of existing. No real evidence, like some evidence, some interesting things. I'm near the Vatican girls. Maybe I'll go see the Incorruptibles. Even Croatia has an official Vatican approved uh, miracle. Maybe I'll go check it out. Isn't that interesting how the bubbles work? But everyone always thinks they have the truth. Everybody. And I'm not, when I say everybody, I mean everybody. Every single person, and this is why I think most people are good, are operating in what they think is true and they want to be dignified. They want to stand up for something that's true. This way of speaking for Catholics is them saying they want to be good and brave. Even Jordan Peterson yesterday with Brett Cooper, he's saying that he wants people to be brave. The dilemma that your version of brave is usually rooted in your perception of what's true, which often isn't universally true. So then you kind of just died for nothing or you kind of just like hurt people for nothing or you hurt it. Why? So how are we going to get along? How are we going to get along with these bubbles? How are these bubbles going to go along with themselves? But make no mistake, before we even attempt to fix any of the issues plaguing society, we must first get our own house in order and it starts with our leaders. The bishops and priests appointed by God as our spiritual fathers must be rightly ordered. There is not enough today, time today for me to list all the stories of priests and bishops misleading their flocks, but none of us can blame ignorance anymore and just blindly proclaim that that's what Father said. Because sadly, many priests we are looking to for leadership are the same ones who prioritize their hobbies or even photos with their dogs and matching outfits for the parish directory. It's easy for us laymen and women to think that in order for us to be holy, that we must be active in our parish and try to fix it. Yes, we absolutely should be involved in supporting our parishes, but we cannot be the source for our parish priests to lean on to help with their problems. Just as we look at the relationship between a father and his son, so too should we look at the relationship between a priest and his people. It would not be appropriate for me to always be looking to my son for help when it is my job as his father to lead him. St. Jose Maria Escriva states that priests are ordained to serve and should not yield to temptation to imitate lay people, but to be priests through and through. Tragically, so many priests revolve much of their happiness from the adulation they receive from their parishioners. And in searching for this, they let their guard down and become overly familiar. This undue familiarity will prove to be problematic every time because as my teammate's girlfriend says, familiarity breeds contempt. St. Hmm. <laughs> Jose Maria continues that some want to see the priest as just another man. That is not so. They want to find in the priest those virtues proper to every Christian and indeed every honorable man. Understanding, justice, a life of work, priestly work in this instance, and good manners. It is not prudent as the laity for us to consume ourselves in becoming amateur theologians so that we can decipher this or that theological teaching, unless, of course, you are a theology major. <laughs> we must be intentional with our focus oh, on our- Oh, Alice, thank you so much. He quoted Taylor Swift. I get it. My friend's girlfriend, Taylor Travis Kelsey. I get it. Thank you for explaining the joke, Alice. I wasn't sure what he meant. I get it. He quoted Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey's his friend. Okay, I get it. I get it. Our state in life and our own vocation. And for most of us, that's as married men and women. Still, we have so many great resources at our fingertips that it doesn't take long to find traditional and timeless teachings that haven't been ambiguously reworded for our times. Plus, there are still many good and holy priests, and it's up to us to seek them out. The chaos of the world is unfortunately reflected in the chaos in our parishes, and sadly, in our cathedrals, our cathedrals too. I will say as a person who mostly, one of the contributing factors for me leaving Catholicism and religion was the wishy-washiness, but also the inconsistency. And I do personally prefer people that walk the walk. You know this about me. And so I do think that religion should be stricter rather than looser, but I do think they should also understand that they're only having the lived experience. 
that no one else is having this lived experience but you guys. And the dilemma is that nobody wants to believe that. A nobody. I've never met a person who didn't eventually assume that their perspective on life was objective. Just thinking you have the objective perspective is the mistake. I really believe this. It's not that you have the objective answer. It's that you have the best understanding with the data, but also what is data and what is the best understanding if the goals are different? And I think this is always going to be the, the, the dilemma with all these bubbles mixing together, which is why there's always going to be controversies within life, within your family. Look, if I can't get my family to get together and fight for each other's civil rights, I don't know how you think the world is going to fight for your civil rights. So then you have to make a really kind of difficult dis dis like um, decision about how to live with people that are differently, like different from you. And then you have to decide, well, when it comes down to it, are you going to defend yourself or not? And that's really, really difficult. So again, when you're having this sort of, when we're gathering tools from something like this, something that's definitely not our bubble, even if we've all come from a bubble similar, we're asking ourselves, are we aware of how we sound like this to other people? Because we must sound like this to other people. When I talk, I know I sound like this to other people because of the way they react. And I feel so weird. I'm like, that's not what I'm saying. I know these Catholics aren't literally saying like something threatening. And I know that they would never think it within reason to go and like hurt people like with malicious intent. But the dilemma is that ultimately the way you vote is going to impact people horribly, whether intentional or not. And they might not look at it intentionally. Truly, when they take away your civil rights as a woman or as a gay, they don't do it maliciously. They think they're helping you. That's why I say the road to hell is paved in good intentions. People who think they're genuinely helping you will be your downfall. They will be the first people to betray you. Judas, as a metaphor, had the best intentions for Jesus. He thought he knew better than him. Judas did not betray Jesus. Judas did not betray Jesus. Judas thought he knew better than Jesus and thought, I love you so much. Let me force you to prove your greatness to these people who doubt you. That's why Jesus says you betray me, but Jesus doesn't mean betray like malicious. He means you think you know me better than I know myself. And you think I, God, didn't know what my, my 4D chess play, like, gameplay was, girl? You don't think I know what I was? And Judas is like, nah, I got you, bro. I got this. Judas betrayed Jesus by not trusting in him. Peter denied Jesus three times because he did not trust in him. Jesus, all of Jesus' stories are about people not trusting in him. That's why the thief on the cross is so significant. That's why people who come into Jesus' life and believe with little to no evidence are significant. That's why doubting Thomas is a part of the Bible so we know what it's like to be that person. These people don't mean it maliciously. But at the same time, the result is the result is the result. So what do we do? How do we figure it out? If I can't even get my own family to stop fighting against my civil rights, what are we gonna do? So obviously I would say form your own bubble. And I would say, do your own thing, girl. The world doesn't care about you. The world cares about its ego and its belief. The whole world is built off beliefs. And the world literally, a part of it, believes exactly what this man is saying. Like, I don't exist in this man's reality. I'm confirmed and I'm baptized, but I don't exist in this reality. That's why Catholics kind of get a hard on when their wives die from ectopic pregnancies because it's seen as like the ultimate sacrifice. Instead of just aborting that baby and having more, they're like, nah, 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 nah. I'd rather risk my wife's life. Because for them, that's like means more to them. That like means something to them. I remember when my parents were really upset because they're like, you wouldn't have an abortion, would you? You wouldn't do that. And I was like, well, I mean, I don't intend to have an abortion. And they're like, you wouldn't have an abortion. I was like, well, if it's an ectopic pregnancy, I'd have an abortion. And they're like, you would have an abortion? And they're looking at me like, I can't believe you would have an abortion. And I was like, I can't believe you think I would die for an ectopic pregnancy. It is what it is, right? People believe different things. Fishy says, I mean this genuinely. How do people who don't think like this learn to love people like this in their family? Is it because this has never been my bubble that I have, have, I have a hard time connecting to the humanity in this category of person? I mean this genuinely. How do people who think like this learn to love people like this in their family? Like, how do they maintain a relationship with people like this in their family if they think differently? I mean, I do it by radically accepting that everyone's on their own journey. Like, everybody's on their own journey. No, Nobody has to be exactly like me, right? Is that what you mean? I don't know if I understood the question. But basically, to me, right, this is just a person on a journey, and they're no different from me, even though we are nothing alike. Like, I'm not like this human, but I'm like this human. I live, and I sacrifice, and I suffer, and I want to see, you know, families be healthy, and people have good lives. We want the same thing. We just think the outcome is different. We just, the way it looks is different. Everyone on the planet wants similar things. They want to love and be loved. They want to see and be seen. They want to have, you know, resources for their families. They just don't agree with how to accomplish it. Hence culture, hence division, hence conflict. We disagree with how to make something 
happen. That's why community is so difficult. Look, I live in Croatia and I love living here, but they just made it constitutional that gay marriage is a no-go because it's a Catholic country. At the end of the day, no matter where you live, no matter how beautiful, beautiful of a place it is, there's always a group of people who don't like a group of people. And so the question is, what do you do then? I form my own bubble and hop in between because I can't fully join any of these places, but I'll be a good community member. I'll pay my tax and I'll mind my business and I won't litter. Fishy says, yeah, kinda. I can't imagine for myself feeling love for this type of person. However, I do see the rhetoric as a threat unsafe to this category. So I see this category as unsafe. So when I, you know, I saw Asmund Gold say something really interesting. Recently, he covered Dr. K and Asmund said, when I spend too much time around people, I start to really hate them. And he says, I prefer to spend like time away from people so I can come back and be happy. He goes, but people really make me upset. And he goes, then I have to remember like not to care. But it's like when you deal with people enough, you remember like, oh my God, they really want to be in your business. It's why I'm so strict with my boundaries. I love my family, but I am very strict with my boundaries because they sound just like this. This is what my family sounds like, but Middle Eastern. So there's like, they're feeding you while they're telling you don't be gay. I love my family. They're very good people. That's what devastated me when I was moving through the levels because I was like, oh my God, none of it matters, does it? Like none of this fucking matters, bro. Like all of this idea of like fighting the Catholics and fighting the Muslims and trying to get people to be pro-LGBT and trying to get people to be, the it doesn't matter. The world is full of 8 billion people billions of billions of bubbles ideas and perceptions and all of it's built off constructs of perception belief belief is scary you know people don't choose the bear over the man strictly because the bear will maul you and the man might do worse it's because the man will have a belief and the question is what is the belief that man's gonna have so when people sit around and go oh the average guy wouldn't hurt you who's the average guy because this feels uncomfortable but if he's really Catholic, then the good news is he probably wouldn't hurt you. He'd probably lecture you the whole time in the forest, though, which would make you wish you chose the bear. <laughs> Do you want to be in the forest with a Catholic like this who's going to lecture you the whole time? Or would you choose the bear? Because I might choose the bear if I'm going to get lectured. We learn to love through whatever tools the universe gives us, our family, our friends, our politics, our churches, whatever. But if I've learned anything about humanity... It's that I disagree with 99% of how y'all live. But you do you, just leave me out of it. As we saw during the pandemic, too many bishops were not leaders at all. They were motivated by fear, fear of being sued, fear of being removed, fear of being disliked. They showed by their actions, intentional or unintentional, that the sacraments don't actually matter. Because of this, countless people died alone without access to the sacraments, and it's a tragedy we must never forget. As Catholics, we can look to so many examples of heroic shepherds who gave their lives for their people and ultimately the church. We cannot buy into the lie that the things we experienced during COVID were appropriate. Over the centuries, there have been great wars, great famines, and yes, even great diseases. All that came with a level of lethality and danger. But in each of those examples, church leaders leaned into their vocations and ensured that their people received the sacraments. Great saints like St. Damien of Malachi, who knew sure, the sure. dangers of his ministry, mm -hmm. stayed for 11 years as a spiritual leader to the leper colonies of Hawaii. Mm -hmm. His heroism is looked at today as something set apart and unique, when ideally, it should not be unique at all. For as a father loves his child, so a shepherd should love his spiritual children too. That goes even more so for our bishops, mm. these men who are present day apostles. Our bishops once had adoring crowds of people kissing their rings and taking in their every word, but now relegate themselves to a position of inconsequential existence. Now, I will say, you know, it's very complicated to have a modern religion. I think religion in of itself is very hard to conceptualize. And even a lot of the Catholics I know don't go to church on a daily basis. They don't go to church weekly. They go once a year. I mean, they're not even fully in, bro. Let's be real. But it is what it is. So I think that's what moves people more into – it's kind of like an Orthodox Jew versus a less Orthodox Jew, I suppose. It's like some people just take it even more seriously because people aren't taking it seriously enough. But at the same time, you know, I don't know how well religion will – I don't know how well it will last in the modern world. Cognitive says, so this is a disagreement of where the world is headed, not how you should treat people on a day-to-day -day basis. I think so. I think it's always a conversation of where the world is headed, but also the ideal. Like, it's funny. 
because you have to think about how people treat each other day to day. So there's always like this, uh, you know, like if I want to visit America, okay, I have to pay for plane tickets. Then I have to think about getting an Airbnb because I would go to either my farm brother's neighborhood or my parents' neighborhood. And I can't stay with either of them because we're not Catholic married. So we can't stay at their house because religion and it's OK, no big deal, but it does stop certain things that are maybe like assumed from happening. Like my brother's always like, please get like blessed in the Catholic church so you can just stay at my house. And I'm like, no, I thought about it, but no. And he was like, come on, it'll be easy. Just like get blessed and you can stay in my house. And I was like, no, I'm good. He's like, so you're going to spend like thousands of dollars at an Airbnb. And I was like, well, realistically, I probably just won't visit yet. But, uh, you know, because like, yeah, that's a lot of money. It's it's very expensive to spend a week or two in California renting a place, whether it's a hotel or not, because your brother won't let you stay at his house because you're not married, like according to the Catholic Church, even though you're legally married. It is what it is. Like, it is what it is. But I do think we stop ourselves sometimes from being able to live together because it feels like a betrayal of our values, which I also have to respect. I have to respect that these are his values and I have to respect that, like, this is his life. You know? Fruit of welcome to memberships. Alice says, Brittany, don't lie. Not even God. She doesn't believe in. Wait, not even to the God she doesn't believe in. Brittany, don't lie. Not even to the God she doesn't believe. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Like, I won't, I won't fake it. I won't fake a religious. It feels disrespectful. It feels disrespectful to pretend and to, like, fake it. A lot of people do, though. A lot of people have Catholic weddings for their parents and tell, like, the priest, like, I don't even believe in this, bro. But if you want to give us a Catholic wedding shirt, I just can't. It makes me feel bad. You know, Colleen says when you talk about this stuff, the BPD diagnosis makes so much sense. I Imagine living in this every day as a gay kid and just hearing every day as a gay kid for your whole life, all of this rhetoric. No, ma'am. It's so, and it's just so invalidating. And then they're abandoning you. And then they're mentioning Ellen and Rosie O'Donnell and Britney Spears and Madonna and Christina Aguilera and every gay person that comes onto the news. And then every time there's a gay person, your parents look at you and go, you're not gay, right? Because they knew. You know, Mark and I were the only two targeted children where my parents were like, are you gay? And I was like, hmm? My mom would be like, are, do you like girls? And I'm like, who? Who? What? Who? Who? What? You know, it'd be nice to live in a community with my family, but not when every day is this. This is, and they love these conversations, guys. Like, this is their conversation. Every, and they love it. They're like, oh my God, have you seen how liberal Pope Francis is? And I'm like, mm hmm. They're like, oh, have you seen how the gays? And I'm, mm hmm. Have you seen these IVF? Mm hmm. Like, every day, this is their stimulating conversation. This guy's speech is like, it's like heroin to the Catholics. And I'm just sitting here like, oh, my God, I'm going to kill myself, bro. I'm going to fucking do it. You know what? That's what I'm – and I want to live live and let live. Like, live and let live. But it is stressful as fuck being a queer kid in this bubble. But also, like, live and let live, you know? I used to take my secular friends to church with me, and they'd be like, holy fuck, what's going on? I'm like, shh, just vibe. Hannah says, my Catholic family would never turn someone away and, or let them stay with them because they don't confirm. Oh, sorry. I can stay at my brother's house if my husband and I sleep in separate rooms. Sorry. I can stay at my brother's house if we sleep in separate rooms. Does that make it better? Because I said, no, I'm not sleeping without my husband. Colleen says, I feel for little Brit. I know that was rough. Look at you, though. You made it. I did, girl. I did make it. You know, Alice says, when my parents discovered that I was cutting as a teen, they told me to, I'd go to hell if I killed myself to put me off. I, my parents say this. My parents go, Batsy, how could you want to kill yourself? Your life is so good. Jesus loves you. I love you. Be Catholic, you'll stop wanting to kill yourself. Just be Catholic. You'll stop wanting to kill yourself. And I was like, bitch. <laughs> Sinister says, so if your family were to ask your opinion of something, this is how you, you react even? Well, it would go like this. So this is how the conversations go. Betty, have you heard that they're letting trans people teach children now? Why would they do this? Why would they push their agenda on kids? And I'd say, oh yeah, that's interesting. Um, yeah, I've heard that trans people get to be teachers now and they'd be like don't you think that's crazy that people who are trans get to teach children and I'd say um yeah I feel like it kind of makes sense though if you're 
uh, just like living your best life and you've got a degree and you're educated. Like, don't we need good teachers? And she goes, yes, yes. Or my mom and dad would say, yes, but don't you think they're pushing an agenda? And I'd say, well, you know, I mean, what is an agenda really? You know, don't the Catholics have an agenda? And she goes, yes, but we have the truth. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like that's probably the problem there is like, I'm not sure that you have a universal truth. And she's like, it's the Catholic church. It's universal. And I'm like, yeah, yeah for sure. It's like that. It's like I speak in a way. And then my mom knows. She goes, I know you're doing this thing where you're like walking around. Just say it. Say what's on your mind. And then I'll be like, well, I just feel like y'all need to stop pretending like everybody agrees with you. And she's just like, OK, but they should agree with us. And I was like, I know you feel that way, but I will kill myself if you force me into this bubble. And then my mom would say, Betty, you're so dramatic, Betty. Why would you kill yourself? <laughs> and then it's like, you're making me crazy. <laughs> and then that's the conversation. And then it goes in circles. OK, it's like it's the same thing. It's like, look, bro, not everybody works the same as you. That's what it is. Not everyone's the same. And I always tell my parents, I will kill myself just to spite you if you keep forcing it down my throats. And then my parents go, oh, you can't kill yourself. And I'm like, I'll do it, bitch. I'll do it, bitch. Discord says, oh, my gosh, Brittany, you're literally explaining my experience with my family and their cult. Listen, OK, I'm a very blunt person. I'm like, I'll do it, bro. And I'll do it. And I'll tell you it's because you <laughs> tried to make me Catholic. Listen, at the end of the day, stop trying to force people to be something they're not. It's fucking obnoxious. You wouldn't like it. And I tell my mom, you wouldn't like it if they do it to you, right? You don't like it. You do not like it when people tell you to not be Catholic, right? And she goes, yeah, of course. And I was like, okay, so stop doing it to other people. And like, that's the thing is like, I try to tell them you wouldn't like it if someone did this to you. But that's the thing is they go, oh, the left thinks they're so tolerant. And I'm like, everyone thinks they're tolerant. None of you are tolerant. All of you are bitches. Everybody thinks they're the biggest victim. Everyone thinks they suffer the most. My mom thinks Catholics are the most persecuted group. Everyone thinks they're the most persecuted group. You're not. I love my family, but holy fuck. Hannah says, do you know how your parents feel about the horrible things conservatives say about immigrants? No, baby, honey, sweet, sweetie. They are, and you know this bubble, they are the immigrants who did it correctly. So they're the good immigrants. And if you were a good immigrant, you can be in the country. But if you're a bad kind of immigrant, you can't be in the country. Good immigrants follow the law. Bad immigrants sneak into the country. They're those kinds of conservatives, right? They're basic immigrant conservatives who are like, we did it correctly, you need to do it correctly. Which, to be fair, sounds really reasonable in a world where you think following the rules always works. So, like, you know that bubble. You know, you know that bubble. <laughs> and look, America worked for them, by the way. My parents are living the American dream. Successful business, successful family, successful everything. They have a house that's paid off. It really, America worked for my parents. My parents love America, bro. My parents don't even update their passports because they never plan to leave. They think America is the greatest thing that happened to the world. To them, America is their liberator. And to be honest, that is true. America has been very good to my parents. People pick the bubbles that are good to them. And America has been very good to my family. And I honestly think that's so valid. I think that's very, very valid. And Dee says, I wish I could have those convos with my family at all, but my dad would slap me if I ever said anything that challenges his religion or thinks is disrespectful. My parents will not let me be disrespectful, but they will let me say things that challenge them. My parents have always been like that, though. They've always encouraged us to ask questions. They've always encouraged us to to have conversations. They very much believe in debate. They believe in discussion. They like philosophy. My parents have no problem having the discussions. They have a hope, though, at the end of every discussion that I will be Catholic. And that's always the frustrating part. But yeah, we we did learn how to manage a way of being. Like even now, I call them all the time and they always try to tell me like, oh, be Catholic. Be, I can't wait till you and your husband are Catholic. Like, please be Catholic. Both of you should be Catholic. They're just, they just want us to be happy the way they're happy. And to be fair, that's not different than anyone else I know. Usually people don't believe you're happy because they couldn't be happy the way you're happy. Which is why I say be happy for people's happy, you know? But I can understand too from their perspective. They just, it's like when you see somebody in a abusive relationship and they tell you they're happy. It would be hard for me to be happy for someone's happy if they were in an abusive relationship. And since they see homosexuality as like inherently abusive, they can't be happy for your happy. Does that kind of make sense? Imagine trying to be happy for somebody you know who gets hit every night by their spouse. Like imagine being like, oh, I'm so happy you're happy. That's kind of how they see homosexuality. Like you're using each other 
It's bad for both of you. It'd be better for both of you to be, you know, broken up. So it's, it's, it's all about that perception. When a bishop of a diocese or the bishop's conference as a whole puts out an important document on this matter or that, nobody even takes a moment to read it, let alone follow it. No. Today, our shepherds are far more concerned with keeping the doors open to the chancery than they are with saying the difficult stuff out loud. It seems that the only time you hear from your bishops is when it's time for the annual appeal, whereas we need our bishops to be vocal about the teachings of the church, setting aside their own personal comfort and embracing their cross. Our bishops are not politicians, but shepherds. So instead of fitting in the world by going along to get along, they too need to stay in their lane and lead. Mm. I do think Catholics should stay in their lane. I agree with that. Bobby says, could you pretend to be Catholic to make your parents happy or would that feel too overbearing? So my parents and I, at this stage in our relationship, do practice like radical honesty with one another. We don't volunteer information, but we don't lie to each other. I don't lie to my parents. I don't, I don't need to anymore. Like as a child, when I would try to lie to my parents, my parents would say, I know you're lying to us and we accept this, but it is a lie. I can tell you're lying. And I'm like, I'm not lying. And they're like, I can tell you're lying. And I was like, okay, well, I'm not lying, but I would be lying. And now I don't lie. I tell my, this is the rule. Don't ask unless you want to be told. My dad says this to my mom all the time. Stop asking her questions if you don't want to hear her answer. And then my mom goes, I have to know. I have to know. Is this true, Betsy? Did this happen? And I'm like, I'll look at my dad. And my dad's like, don't ask her the question. Leave Brittany alone. Don't ask her. And then my mom's like, I got to know. I, I got to know. And I'm like, I will tell you the truth, bitch. Don't. I will do it. And so that's the relationship we have now. And I'd rather have it that way. I'd rather be honest than lie. And my parents would know I can't fake that shit with them. They would know. And you know how they would know? Because they would start asking or they would start watching my YouTube channel. Like if I'm Catholic, then my parents can watch my YouTube channel. If I'm Catholic again, you know what I mean? Like I, if I was, guys, if I was Catholic, I would have a Catholic YouTube channel. Right? Like if I was Catholic, I would be the best Catholic. I'd be so good at it. I would be so good at it, you know? Leave Brittany alone. Yes, Maddox. Leave me alone. Live and let live, bro. I'm not, I'm going to fight for your civil liberties. I'm going to fight for your religious freedom. But you better back the fuck off when it comes to my civil rights, bitch. And D says, does any of your family keep up with your YouTube channel? So my siblings, some of them do on and off. Like my sister checks in on occasion. She's been telling me my content's been fire. Thank you. Um, Mark watches a lot of my content, my little brother. Um, my other brothers check in on occasion. They usually keep up barely, but not really. It's not like they're watching every single thing. I put out a lot of content. Like, because I'm at work, right? I'm at work. It's not like I go to their job to see what they're doing. It feels weird for them to come to my job. But my parents don't look up my YouTube channel on purpose. We have a don't ask, don't tell kind of policy where I just say work's going well. But they know I'm not doing Catholic stuff. But yeah, if I was, if I told them I was Catholic, like to fake it to them, then they would show up on my channel and see that I was lying, right? So we, we just try to be very healthy and like honest and, and have boundaries and say, I'm not going to answer that question. I feel like it will hurt your feelings. I say all of this not from a place of anger as we get the leaders we deserve. But this does make me reflect on staying in my lane and focusing on my own vocation and how I can be a better father and husband and live in the world, but not be of it. True, true, focusing true. on my vocation while praying and fasting for these men will do more for the church than me complaining about her leaders. Because there seems to be so much confusion coming from our leaders, there needs to be concrete examples for people to look to in places like Benedictine, a little Kansas college built high on a bluff above the Missouri River, are showing the world how an ordered, Christ-centered existence is the recipe for success. You need to look no further than the examples all around this campus, where over the past 20 years, enrollment has doubled Construction and revitalization are a constant part of life, and people, the students, the faculty and staff, are thriving. Mm. This didn't happen by chance. In a deliberate movement to embrace traditional Catholic values, Benedictine has gone from just another liberal arts school with nothing to set it apart to a thriving beacon of light and a reminder to us all that when you embrace tradition, success, worldly and spiritual, will follow. I am certain... Now, really fast, because one of you is asking if there's any truth to him having gone to conversion therapy. I do have a TikTok to show you afterwards of somebody allegedly having a grinder situation with him. 
I don't know if it's true. And look, if you're a bisexual king and you want to put that side of yourself to rest and become Catholic, like that's your business. If you want to be Muslim, that's your business. You know, I'm not saying, you know, he's a homosexual. He could be a, a, a bisexual, a pansexual. Um, he could be lots of things. So I don't think it's outside of reason to think that he could have been on Grinder and not practicing Catholic. Because if he was like, it wouldn't be that weird for him to have been bisexual at some point or gay and then decided to be more Catholic or something. Like that's not that weird, right? So I do have a TikTok to show you guys after this in regards to that, but who knows? Because, you know, ultimately religion is hard. Finding yourself is hard. Being of the world is hard. Figuring out your meaning crisis is hard. I know so many gay people or so many queer people who message me all the time saying, hey, I think I'm gonna go back to church. And I'm like, why? And they're like, this is why. And I'm like, that makes sense. Have a good time. They're usually looking for community. They're looking for structure. They're looking for discipline. Discipline is incredibly hard to find in a world that is just so undisciplined. And religion gives you kind of a cheat code to being disciplined. So to all of my queer people in my audience who are thinking about going back to their religions, go and see if the bubble serves you. And if it does, great. And if it doesn't, that's okay too. But if you're looking for something religion supplies you with, I guarantee you can find it somewhere else. You just gotta know where to find it. And maybe it's about forming your own bubble. It is only my hope that you find your joy. So I have no problem with Harrison having been a, a secularist or some sort of like bisexual, pansexual gay boy. None of that is offensive to me if he ended up religious. I just, the narrative that he is the answer for all the people in the world is one I don't like. I don't like it from progressives. I don't like it from conservatives. I don't like it from the religious. I don't like it from atheists. I don't like the attitude from people that they think their way of living is gonna be great for eight billion diverse people on the planet. It's ridiculous. But people usually have to think they have the answer for all the people in the world so they feel good about their choices, which is the flaw of being a person, but also, to be fair, is what civilization is built on. Our civilization is the best. That's why we're going to destroy yours and swallow you up. And that's why we're going to make the world like us. Western values and all that, you know. Sinister says his mother is a medical physicist, so it confuses me slightly when he talks about the traditional vocation of women. I wonder if he was raised like this or adopted these values later in life. Mm, it depends, right? Lots of Catholic women I know work. Also, Catholic women do think they're feminists. They, my mother worked, she just didn't work when we were kids, but she worked before and she worked after, but that's what they mean. They want women to be capable. They want women to have jobs. They just don't want women to give up being a mother for their jobs. Like, do you get what I'm saying? So his mother probably, all the Catholic women I know have master's degrees and PhDs and like are incredibly capable. Not all of them, I'm exaggerating, but so many of them are highly educated but they do not give up their time with their kids for their careers. And that's usually the difference. The difference is you're supposed to spend as much time with your children as possible as a mother and a father. So you're not, but as the father, the father makes the sacrifice to give up time with his kids to bring, to bring money into the family, right? So like that's the balance. So my brother chooses to work from home so he can spend as much time with his kids as possible. My dad chose to own a business so he could spend more time with his kids. You just make your life work for you. But yeah, like lots of women who are Catholic are incredibly educated. They just, you know, kids first, then career. Not not no career, just like kids first, then career. It's kind of their priorities. And the reporters at the AP could not have imagined that their attempt to rebuke and embarrass places and people like those here at Benedictine wouldn't be met with anger. Mm. But in Sorry, hold on. Let me tell you a quick story. I'm going to go on a tangent. St. Thomas Aquinas College is a Catholic college and a lot of the homeschoolers get sent to it for a weekend to see if they want to go there. So when I was a teenager, I went to St. Thomas Aquinas College and I spent a weekend there. There was women and they were going for their degrees to get educated to be mothers, right? Because like who doesn't want an educated mother type thing? Not that all Catholic women get educated. It's not important. But the point is, is they are not afraid to get educated even though they know they want to be stay-at-home mothers. And I think this is an important thing that is like very bubbled. So I went to St. Thomas Aquinas College, beautiful campus. If you ever go just to see it, it's gorgeous campus. Oh my gosh, gorgeous campus. Up in the woods, sometimes hard to find, beautiful lake, trees, just gorge. The women and men are separated. They don't and are not allowed in each other's dorms. All the women have to wear skirts. All the men wear pants, of course, and they greet each other by their last names. And I remember while I was there, and of course, there's no drinking or drugs or anything, 
and you go to church every Sunday. Okay. And you wear a veil because they do traditional mass that way. So anyways, when I was there, I remember being, God, I must've been like 14, I guess, 12, 13, 14. I remember saying, um, I can't wait to go home. I was there for three days. And I remember thinking, I got to go home. I got to go home. This is crazy. I got to go home. I don't like this. I didn't like it. I went to their classrooms. I listened to how they spoke. And I asked the girls, I was like, do I have to wear a skirt every day, bro? They're like, yeah. And I was like, I don't want to do this. And I just remember being like, this is my hell. This is my hell. Not because it is. Because it is my, my, it feels like a cage to me. Not because it is a cage. Because for some people, it's their liberty. For some people, it's their joy. But for me, I was like, I'm going crazy here. So many rules, so many expectations, and none of the rules I wanted to follow. Listen, rules that you want to follow feel like freedom. Discipline that you want to follow feels like freedom. The right form of discipline will set you free. So what these people are doing is they found their form of freedom and they think this form of discipline is for everybody. And it's not. It's not. And that's the dilemma we're having. Even in Islam, like sometimes I see hijab and I was like, I'll wear hijab. Because there's an element to it that feels really cool because it's discipline. But it's not going to make me feel like I'm free. It's going to make me feel like I'm trapped. So find the form of discipline that sets you free because that's going to, mm, that's going to change your life, bros. Definitely change mine. Right? Farah says, honestly, finding out he was Catholic preaching like this kind of shocked me. I grew up Pentecostal and other pennies doing this kind of preaching isn't unusual, but I've never met a preachy Catholic. Oh, girl. They preach like this at my, like my parents' churches. I was at church with my parents and they'd be talking about policy and how to vote. I'm telling you, Catholics definitely involve themselves in politics. It's why religion being tax exempt makes no sense. Religion is politics. And they talk about politics in church. I don't know why religious, all my life in Catholic churches, no matter what Catholic church I was in, they told you how to vote. They told you who to vote for. They told you what policy to vote for. I've never been to a Catholic church that didn't mention something. So I don't know why we let them be tax exempt when it's basically a business. But look at us living in a world where it's, you know, okay, ma'am. Instead met with excitement mm. and pride. Not the deadly sin sort of pride that has an entire month dedicated to it, but the true God-centered pride. I'm so sorry. He said deadly sins, and I was like, seven deadly sins? Weeb brain. That is cooperating with the Holy Ghost to glorify him. Reading that article now shared all over the world, we see that in the complete surrender of self and a turning towards Christ, you will find happiness. Right here in a little town in Kansas, we find many inspiring lay people using their talents. President Minnis, Dr. Swafford, and Dr. Zimmer are a few great examples right here on this. I wonder which Dr. Zimmer they're talking about. There's a lot of Dr. Zimmers in the Catholic Church. We know some of them. See, like the, like the kind of popular Catholics, I know this is such a bubble, but like my family knows a lot of the popular Catholics. They have radio shows. Some of them are the godparents to my siblings. My parents used to hold Catholic Bible studies where they'd have debates. Like you guys know how we watch debates with Jordan Peterson and like... um you know, um, I don't know, Sam Harris or whatever. The Catholic version of that was my upbringing. The Catholic celebrities where they would debate and talk to people of different religions, that's, they used to be hosted at my parents, in my parents' living room. Growing up, like, that's why I grew up feeling like, oh, I know this bubble. This is all the bubble I grew up in. Where they would literally, like, to this day, they'll sometimes host events or we'll go to conferences and, like, that was just the vibe I grew up in. Debate was just our life. But of course, they hoped I would become a debater for the Catholic, like for Catholics, which is pretty funny. It's a very campus that will keep the light of Christ burning bright for generations to come. Being locked in with your vocation and staying in your lane is going to be the surest way for you to find true happiness and peace in this life. It is essential that we focus on our own state in life, whether that be as a layperson, a priest, or religious. True. And he says, I don't know if this is culture where I live. Catholics 100% keep to themselves regardless of how conservative they are. No preaching. Oh, no, no, no. My parents do not bother people. They do not go to door to door. Catholics do not preach. Catholics talk to themselves. He's at a Catholic college talking to Catholics. 
So they preach to each other, but they do not bother other people. That's actually what I like about Catholicism. No, no, no. My people keep to themselves. The only time they get involved is during political protests or sometimes they'll pray outside of abortion clinics, which is annoying. But yeah, they do not go door to door. They do not bother people. They are not annoying. Catholics are usually chill. But that's the thing. He is at a Catholic college talking to Catholics. So this is how Catholics talk to themselves. This is like every Catholic event I've ever gone to. This is a speech I would hear. So. Ladies and gentlemen of the class of 2024, you are sitting at the edge of the rest of your lives. Each of you has the potential to leave a legacy that transcends yourselves and this era of human existence. In the small ways, by living out your vocation, you will ensure that God's church continues and the world is enlightened by your example. For the ladies present today, oh, oh. congratulations on an amazing accomplishment. You should be proud of all that you have achieved to this point in your young lives. I want to speak directly to you briefly because I think it is you, the women, who have had the most diabolical lies told to you. How many of you are sitting here now about to cross this stage and are thinking about all the promotions and titles you are going to get in your career? Some of you may go on to lead successful careers in the world, but I would venture to guess that the majority of you are most excited about your marriage and the children you will bring into this world. I can tell you that my beautiful wife, Isabel, would be the first to say that her life truly started when she began living her vocation as a wife and as a mother. I'm on this stage today and able to be the man I am because I have a wife who leans into her vocation. I'm beyond blessed with the many talents God has given me, but it cannot be overstated that all of my success is made possible because a girl I met in band class back in middle school would convert to the faith, become my wife, oh, man. and embrace one of the most important titles of all, homemaker. My man getting emotional. My man getting emotional about his woman. That's cute. Okay. <sighs> She's Mariah. a primary educator to our children. <laughs> Mariah. <laughs> Mariah with the tomato emoji. And Mariah, put your tomatoes down. Let the man cry, Mariah. <laughs> That's cute. That's cute. I love that he's in love. I love that they knew each other in middle school. This is romance to Catholics. Let them have it. She's the one who ensures I never let football or my business become a distraction from that of a husband and father. She is the person that knows me best at my core. And it is through our marriage that, Lord willing, we will both attain salvation. I say all of this to you because I have seen it firsthand how much happier someone can be when they disregard the outside noise and move closer and closer to God's will in their life. Isabel's dream of having a career might not have come true, but if you ask her today if she has any regrets on her decision, she would laugh out loud without hesitation and say, heck no. As a man who gets a lot of praise and has been given a platform to speak to audience like, audiences like this one today, I pray that I always use my voice for God and not for myself. Okay, hold on. MT says, what's off about this to me is it's coming from an NFL player whose life point has been dedicated to pursuing his dreams. His speech is like he forgot. Forget about your dreams. Be a mom. Okay, guys, Catholic women in this particular bubble, their only dream is to be a mom. My sister-in-law didn't work or finish college because all she wanted to do is become a mom. Her nightmare is having a job. My sister-in-law is like, oh, my God, I was terrified I wouldn't meet my husband because I didn't want to be a career person like she didn't have to give up her job she found the job because here's the thing lots of women even liberal women pursue careers only to be willing to give them up if the opportunity is presented to them not everybody's meant to work most men don't even seem to like to work I would argue that lots of people's dreams is not to work it is to exist in a thing they like to do that could support them, but often can't. I would argue my dream is to work, and that's an anomaly. Most people I meet don't even want to do their jobs. I was listening to Miss Kiff today on stream talk about how he doesn't want to stream because it's boring. He doesn't even want to work. They don't even want to work. Like, it's so interesting. I have this illusion, because I'm an American, that people dream of labor. People do not dream of labor. Like people, I don't think have a dream to work. 
So I don't think his wife necessarily gave up on her, her dream because I think in this specific bubble, there is a dream to be a mom and to stay at home. And lots of people seem to have it. It's interesting. It's very interesting, you know, because I, and again, I want to be open to this because whatever we find icky, they find icky about us. And it's like, okay, you do you over there. Just don't make it my life. You know, Fishy said, what's the difference between wanting to work and wanting to do something that supports you? If given the chance, I would still work. Like if I had a billion dollars, I would still work and I would want to work. Most people dream about making money so they never have to work a day in their life. I like to work. I think the difference is like people just want to do things at home that are like hobbies or gardening or like they just want to relax. They want to do whatever they want every day. I do things I don't want to do every day, but I like to work. And a part of working is doing things you don't want to do every day. You know? So I like to work. There's something in that model that really makes my brain feel good. But not everybody feels that way. Most people dream of never having to go to work. Yeah, so I would say like there's a huge difference between that. Um, some people, some people, yeah, they never want to work a day in their life, which is just so interesting. Like I couldn't be on perpetual vacation. Some people could be on vacation every day. I could never, I could never, I would die. I would get so bored. I'd be like, I cannot do this. I'd have to work. I'd have to do something, you know? But remember that being the moms also means more to some people than others like my brother and his wife run a little farm and she is she's got her education in like soil and dirt and stuff and she's always like mark just sent me a video my my other brother not the the gay one who lives with my catholic brother he just sent me a video of the farm it looks amazing it's beautiful that takes a lot of labor so his wife is always laboring she's just not laboring in the in a in a way like it's a job job like she would hate to have a job she would hate to have to make money let me say it like that i like making money she would hate to have to make money. Does that say it a little bit better? Versus my brother, he just chose a job that he's good at and he's good at making money. He's like, oh, I'm good at that. I'm going to do that. He doesn't like his job any more than anyone else, but he's good at it. And so he's like, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? You know what I mean, Jelly Bean? Also, Discord said, how do you differentiate, differentiate between people that are open to see you and the ones that aren't? Data. Data. And it's not that they're open to seeing you, it's can they see you? Because even if they're open to seeing you, I've discovered that it doesn't mean they can. Because I have even tried to see people and like I can't communicate with them because they can't comprehend me or I can't comprehend them. So it's not about, it's the data, go off the data. Are people really open to seeing you or are they not? It depends if they can understand you. So like my parents, no matter how much I talk to them, will never be open to seeing homosexuality as an option because they can't comprehend it. They cannot comprehend. They even say it. They're like, Betsy, I can't comprehend what you're saying. How could this ever be good? And there's absolutely no way to explain it to them. They're never going to comprehend it. It doesn't mean they're stupid. It means that they're set on a belief that really gives them joy and it doesn't make sense to learn it. Humans are animals. Why learn a skill that's just going to make your life harder? So it really, it really depends on your goals. It's why I no longer fight for people to see me. I only accept if they can, and then I move on. Everything I am saying to you is not from a place of wisdom, but rather a place of experience. I am hopeful that these words will be seen as those from a man not much older than you, who feels it is imperative that this class, this generation, and this time in our society must stop pretending that the things we see around us are normal. Heterodox ideas abound even within Catholic circles. For let's be honest, there is nothing good about playing God with having children, whether that be your ideal number or the perfect time to conceive. No matter how you spin it, there is nothing natural about Catholic birth control. It is only in the past few years that I have grown encouraged to speak more boldly and directly because as I mentioned earlier, I have leaned into my vocation as a husband and father and as a man. To the gentlemen here today, part of what plagues our society is this lie that has been told to you that men are not necessary in the home or in our communities. As men, we set the tone of the culture, and when that is absent, disorder, dysfunction, and chaos set in. This absence of men in the home is what plays a large role in the violence we see all around the nation. Other countries do not have nearly the same absentee father rates as we find here in the U.S., and a correlation could be made in their drastically lower violence rates as well. Be unapologetic in your masculinity, fighting against the cultural emasculation of men. Do hard things. 
Never settle for what is easy. You might have a talent that you don't necessarily enjoy, but if it glorifies God, maybe you should lean into that over something that you might think suits you better. I speak from experience as an introvert who now finds myself as an amateur public speaker and an entrepreneur, something I never thought I'd be when I received my industrial engineering degree. The road ahead is bright. Things are changing, society is shifting, and people young and old are embracing tradition. Not only has it been my vocation that has helped me and those closest to me, but not surprising to many of you should be my outspoken embrace of the traditional Latin mass. I've been very vocal in my love and devotion to the TLM and its necessity for our lives. But what I think gets misunderstood is that people who attend the TLM do so out of pride or preference. I can speak to my own experience, but for most people I have come across within these communities, this simply is not true. I do not attend the TLM because I think I am better than others or for the smells and bells or even for the love of Latin. I attend the TLM because I believe just as the God of the Old Testament was pretty particular in how he wanted to be worshiped, the same holds true for us today. It is through the TLM that I encountered order and began to pursue it in my own life. Aside from the TLM itself, too many of our sacred tr traditions have been relegated to things of the past when in my parish, things such as ember days, days when we fast and pray for vocations and for our priests are still adhered to. The TLM is so essential that I would challenge each of you to pick a place to move where it is readily available. A lot of people have complaints about the parish or the community, but we should not sacrifice the mass for community. I prioritize the TLM even if the parish isn't beautiful. Uh, my, my family looks for traditional Latin masses as well and tries to find them. Uh, they're really beautiful, to be fair. A Latin mass is gorgeous. Like, it's a beautiful ceremony. But it is one of the most, it is, <laughs> Justin, <laughs> Justin, <laughs> Justin says the longer he talks, the more atheist I become. Listen, this, listen, okay, as somebody who used to weep in church because I was so sure I could feel the power of the Holy Spirit, I will say, yes, the more he talks, the more I'm so sure I am never going to become Catholic. Which is why my husband always, like, he jokes that if you ever came home and was like, I'm going to be Catholic, I'm going to take you to the doctor. Can you imagine if, guys, I should get on stream one day and be like, ectopic pregnancies, IVF, aborted babies. Like, I should, you know what I mean? Like, I could never, it's not a part of my belief about the world. Um, I love that people find their bubbles. And when he talks, the more he talks, the more I am so confident in my life choices. But also, I am so much more reassured that bubbles are so real. This is what people stress over. They go to bed stressed about the world and life and the fear of how people will be and how you're contributing to making the world worse. Now you understand why my parents say like, hey, you are contributing to the destruction of the world. Because if I was Catholic, I would be. And of course, they see me as Catholic because I'm baptized and confirmed. So to them, I'm a fallen away Catholic who's moving people further from Catholicism, right? That's like pretty bad. But I'm not a practicing Catholic. I don't believe in it. I don't even consider myself Catholic. But once a Catholic, always a Catholic, as they say. Bubbles, right? Bubbles. It's so interesting. It's just so clear to me. Now, that doesn't mean I'm better than these people or worse than these people. It just means I'm different. I have my own bubble with my own beliefs. And I certainly don't know everything. I know very little. Right? But it is one of those things where it's like, okay, like we have to learn to get along, my bros. We have to learn to get along. I love my family. But imagine, like this is why I last about three or four days staying at my parents' house before I'm like, okay, I got to go home. 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 Every night they listen to Catholic news. My mom has EWTN on every day, all day. My parents listen to talk radio that's Catholic as well. Every day, all day. The gay, the trans, they're ruining our lives. The gay, the trans, they're coming for our wives. The gays, the trans, they're grooming our kids. The gays and trans, they're destroying our flag. I just made up that song. I'm amazing. You know what I mean? Three days. And then I'm like, I love you so much. I've got to go home. I've got to go back to my life. I love my bubble. I love my life. Oh my God, my life is so good. And it is the furthest, furthest from this bubble. And I'm so happy. I don't think people in that bubble need to be like me though. And that's the difference. 
They need to learn to stop needing people to be like them. But so does everyone else. If I could give one tool to the world, it's that. Nobody needs to be like you, Cheryl. We all have our own lives. Colleen says, I'd be defending these people when I talk to my kids, but they are seriously so annoying. They're so annoying. Everybody's annoying to everybody, though. That's the problem. And the way they are sensitive and claim the world is sensitive, everybody is sensitive, guys. Everybody is sensitive. The way these people talk about snowflakes and how these people are effeminate, ma'am, you're crying over an analogy or hypothetical about a bear and a man. Men are weeping. They are getting emotionally triggered because women chose a hypothetical bear in a scenario that's never going to happen. And you're talking about sensitive. You're saying, like, you're saying women are illogical for choosing the bear. You're illogical for crying over a hypothetical that has nothing to do with you. Talk about projection. The world is sensitive and you are not exempt. None of us are. The priest isn't great or the community isn't amazing. I still go to the TLM because I believe the holy sacrifice of the mass is more important than anything else. I say this knowing full well that when each of you rekindle your knowledge and adherence to many of the church's greatest traditions, you will see how much more colorful and alive your life can and should be. As you move on from this place and enter into the world, know that you will face many challenges. Sadly, I'm sure many of you know of the countless stories of good and active members of this community who after graduation and moving away from the Benedictine bubble have ended up oh. moving in with the- He said the word. He said the word. He said the word bubble and he knows. See how people know the word bubbles there? The Benedict bubble, the Benedictine bubble. Once you move away from this bubble, we know we all live in bubbles. And yet you can't accept that your bubble is just one of the billions. You got to think, because you're all narcissists, everybody is, oh, my bubble is definitely the good one. My bubble's the best one. My bubble's the, gr your bubble's just another way to live, girl. Their boyfriend or girlfriend prior to marriage. Some even leave the church and ab abandon God. It is always heartbreaking to hear these stories. And there's a desire to know what happened and what went wrong. What you must remember is that life is about doing the small things well. Setting yourself up for success and surrounding yourself with people who continually push you to be the best version of you. I say this all the time that iron sharpens iron. It's a great reminder that those closest to us should be making us better. If you are dating someone who doesn't even share your faith, how do you expect that person to help you become a saint? True. I don't know how y'all believe in your religions and you dating someone who's not even in it. That's crazy. You don't believe in your God enough to deny the pussy? Crazy. If your friend group is filled with people who only think about what you're doing next weekend and are not willing to have those difficult conversations, how can they help sharpen you? As you prepare to enter into the workforce, it is extremely important that you actually think about the places you are moving to. Who is the bishop? What kind of parishes are there? Do they offer the TLM and have priests who embrace their priestly vocation? Cost of living must not be the only arbiter of your choices, for a life without God is not a life at all. And the cost of salvation is worth more than any career. I do think the group of people he just named, the ones who are probably going to leave the faith after college, they're probably the ones who got offended at his speech. Because if you got offended at this speech, like you're not going to be a traditional Catholic. You're not going to get it. Like how do you hear this speech as a traditional Catholic and think it's weird? It's exactly what they're always saying. So my theory is if any of the women were offended in the audience, welcome ladies. Are you lesbian, gay, queer, feminist? Do you want to abort your babies? Come. Join us. Leave the Catholic bubble and come to the secular one. Come, ladies. We will envelop you and squeeze your heads into our chests and keep you warm at night. Because truthfully, no traditional Catholic woman should get offended at this speech. It makes no sense to get offended. So shout out to my future liberals. Shout out to my future atheists. Shout out to my future OnlyFans girls. And boys and theys. You know what I'm saying? I think it's good. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, you know, I'm just saying, here we go, baby. I'm excited for the future and I pray that something I have said will resonate as you move on to the next chapter of your life. Never be afraid to profess the one holy Catholic and apostolic church for this is the church that Jesus Christ established through which we receive sanctifying grace. I know that my message today had a little less fluff than is expected for these speeches. 
But I believe that this audience and this venue is the best place to speak openly and honestly about who we are and where we all want to go, mm. which is heaven. Mm. I thank God for Benedictine College and for the example it provides to the world. I thank God for men like President Minnis who are doing their part for the kingdom. Come to find out, you can have an authentically Catholic college and a thriving football program. <laughs> Make no mistake, you are entering into mission territory in a post-God world, but you were made for this, and with God by your side and a constant striving for virtue within your vocation, you too can be a saint. Christ is king to the heights. It's a lot of people. Look at all these people. Okay, there we go. Okay, so Catholic bubble, everything you're saying makes sense to me. If people are offended, then genuinely, like, you're probably not going to stay Catholic. Congratulations. Welcome to atheism. But also, what did you think it was? What did you think it was, you know? Sinister says, I wonder if I could force myself to believe in God as an experiment. Hey, let us know if you end up doing that, how it turns out, because that's interesting. I meet a lot of people a lot who, you know, they go back into religion. They try to figure it out. They try to figure out, okay, am I missing something from this? Look, I love the Bible. I love Catholicism. I love the stories. I'm not going to be Catholic, but I always can gain some wisdom from learning how other people operate in the world and what wisdom these these very ancient religions, you know, still have for us to learn from. It's not the, that the Catholic religion has nothing for us to learn. It's just that it's not enough for us to convert. And the frustrating thing I see is every time you show a little bit of interest, they're like, oh my God, are you going to become Catholic? When Jordan Peterson showed any interest in Catholicism, people were like, one of us, one of, same with Islam. I saw that when Jordan Peterson was talking to some Muslims, they were like, one of us, one of us. I was like, y'all, nobody, I don't want to be on your team. And Tammy, his wife, Jordan Peterson's wife, just converted to Catholicism. So she just did it. And Candace, just, Candace Owens just converted to Catholicism because her husband's Catholic. It's just interesting. It's interesting why people are going back to religion, but it's not surprising. Consistency, structure, community, these things, these three things science has shown people need. You can get them outside of religion. But you also have to find the right one for you or make the right one for you. It's not about playing God. It's about deciding whether or not you believe in him. Belief is what the world is built on. These bubbles are all built off belief, even mine. I believe what I believe. I know very little and that's that, right? Oh, interesting. Yeah, I'm not mad about it. It's not my bubble. I'm kind of surprised people thought it was that big of a deal since he was... Catholic talking to a Catholic bubble, but here we are. Any thoughts? This is a group of nuns associated with the Benedict College is weighing in on Harrison's controversial graduation speech, the Sisters of Mount St. Scholastica, who described their group as a founding institution and sponsor of Benedict College, just shared a statement about the professional football team's football player's speech, saying his comments don't represent Catholic Benedict liberal arts college that our founders envisioned and in which we have been so invested. Okay. Instead of promoting unity in our church, our nation, and in the world, his comments seem to have fostered division. One of our concerns was the assertion that being a homemaker is the highest calling for a woman. The sisters went on to describe how they have devoted their lives to God and have educated women, many women over the 160 years. These women have made a tremendous difference in the world in their roles as wives and mothers through their God-given gifts of leadership, scholarship, and their careers. Well, obviously, I don't think he was saying that their highest vocation is to be a mother because obviously your highest vocation would be to fulfill your calling to God, which would, could be being a nun, which could be being a lay person, which could be being single. Like Catholics don't actually believe your greatest calling. I don't think I got that from his speech. It says, some of you may go on to lead successful careers in the world, he said, but I would venture to guess that the majority of you are the most excited about your marriage and children. I think that's accurate. I think a majority of Catholic women will want to be mothers. Some of them will be nuns. Some of them will be leaders. Some of them will be single. That's interesting. Today's Hoda Kot and Jenna Bush Hager, who also weighed in on the debate while on air this week, expressed their disappointments and what they saw as a narrow-minded view of women's potential. Well, I'm where I am today because I have a husband who leans into his vocation, which is being an equal partner, and I tell him that all the time. 
Hoda said, don't speak for us. Stop speaking for women out there. Girl, just ditch your religion, girl. We all have these people that try to divide us by labels, Jenna said. People that stay at home are amazing. The work they do is incredible. And let's not compare one to the other. This is why, this is why I'm an atheist. Not literally. But I do think it's interesting that everybody wants a religion, but nobody actually wants to follow the religion. You know what I mean? Choosing your highest vocation, a majority of them will be mothers who need to be with their children. If you're going to prioritize your kids or prioritize your job over your kids, like, I think that's, first of all, I think that's shitty when secular people do it. For the record, I think it's shitty when anyone prioritizes their job over their kids without at least a balance. I do. Like, I think that, but I think most people should be parents. I think it's weird when people pick or pick, like pick what they like out of religion. It's like just just dismantle religion, guys. If you're gonna pick and choose, Alice says, "What if a what if a nun or a woman said this?" That's what I mean. Like it would make sense. Like it it just makes sense from a Catholic perspective. What he said. I don't know why everyone's trying to modernize their religions. Just dismantle them. It feels weird. He said most of you. He didn't say all of you. And that's true. Just it's going to be most of those women who are going to be want to be stay at home moms and not stay at home moms all the time. Right. Just like while the kids are children. But that means not prioritizing your career. That's why being a stay at home mom is so hard because you can't prioritize your career and do it. Yeah, I wonder. This is my frustrating part with communities, though. Because the moment you're part of a community, there always comes a part where you want to keep it traditional, make it modern, change it. Nothing is objective. Everything is always subjective and a construct. Even Catholicism is a construct. Everything is a construct, but they think it's the truest construct. It's the most real thing. But yeah, I, I do think that if both of the parents are working and no one's spending time with the kids when they need them, I think that's a decision, you know? And that's speaking from for people in like privilege. You know, but I also think we should educate the populace so they can make those decisions. But then Catholics don't believe in birth control. Taylor said he singled out only the women and said their degrees are a big lie at their graduations. That is not what he said. He heavily insinuated their lives won't start until they're married. That's not what he said. He said for many women, they feel like their lives don't start until they're mothers, which is a very real phenomenon. That is something I've heard so many women tell me that they felt like their life didn't start till they became mothers. I don't need to take that away from them to actually live my life. My life started. I'm not a mother. I'm not going to have children. But that is a very true phenomenon for lots of women. They feel like their lives don't start till they have kids. Lots of men have also told me this, that they didn't feel like their life started till they became a father. That's just a phenomenon. That's like a real lived experience people have. You know, I just don't know why we need to take away people's relationship with themselves any more than they're trying to take away ours you know what I mean like I think that their lived experience is valid I wish they understood mine was but like their relationship is valid you know they're allowed to feel like their life didn't start till they became parents I don't feel that way but like you know what does it have to do with me, right? So I, I didn't take his speech too offensively. He's not talking to me. Also, you got to learn, guys, who is talking to you. He's not talking to us. He's not talking to us. And he's not talking for women. This is just a live experience that he has in his bubble with the women in his life. And it sounds like a lot of the women in my life. I bet my family and his family would get along. Okay, let's look at this really fast as well. <sighs> and lots of people feel like their life ended when they became parents. You ever hear those people? How sad is that? They're like, my life was over the moment I became a parent. But that's true for people too. People hate it either way. They hate if they say, if they hate you, if you say your life started when you became a parent. They hate you if you say you're not gonna have kids. They hate you if you say your life stopped when you became a parent. So many people feel differently than you. Your life is not the end-all be-all of everybody else's life. Momo said that's what Ethan from H3 said about his life until having kids. Yeah, I don't know. I thought the speech was fine. I think if I was in that bubble, it would have been a nice speech to hear, but I'm not in that bubble, so I don't care. Not the deadly sin sort of pride that has an entire month dedicated to it. When I first saw videos of this man going around, I thought I recognized him from somewhere. And then I remembered that a couple years ago, when I was at a cheer competition in Kansas City, I saw him on Grindr. He wore an ugly camo print hoodie in his profile. That does not look like the same person to me, but a beard really changes how a person looks. Does anybody feel like that looks like the same guy? Because I... Don't, 
I could not tell you that if you I have I think I face blindness because I could not tell you that was the same person. Saw a picture a lot like this one. You've probably heard the rumors about him sleeping with a male cheerleader during his early days on the Chiefs. And coming from the mid Missouri cheer scene, word travels fast. And word on the street is that he likes skinny brunette twinks. A lot like his wife, but a man. This is all alleged, of course, meaning that because I don't want to get sued, this could all be made up. But it is very interesting that it oftentimes is the most homophobic men who tend to take it up the butt. Or vice versa. I wouldn't know. He's the homo. I actually don't approve of outing people. So now I feel bad kind of sharing that. But I don't really think it's our business if he is pansexual or gay. Or like queer or bisexual, whatever his identity is. Is it like any of our fucking business? Isn't it kind of like someone becoming vegan and then being like, oh my God, do you know they ate meat five years ago? It's like, what does that matter if they used to eat meat? You know what I mean? Like, I feel like that's kind of weird. How do you guys feel about that? Do you think I shouldn't have shared that? Do you think that was like a violation of his consent as a queer community? Like the queers in my audience, like, I don't know. Part of me feels like I we shouldn't have had this conversation in public. But I don't know. Fishy says the energy of that TikTok was kind of icky. Yeah, the it was kind of icky, right? I don't know what his speech has to do with the fact that he might have been pansexual or is pansexual, right? Justin said it is our business if he goes hard to paint against homosexuality, but it doesn't make sense, guys. Even if he's – you can be gay and Catholic. Are you guys dumb? Like, not you. Sorry. The people who are going after him. You can be gay and Catholic. You just can't act on your gayness. Like, I don't understand why people don't know this. Like, outing him for being gay feels fucking, like, vengeful as fuck. It feels so disrespectful. Because you can be, like, what if he's bisexual? Who cares? If he's gay and Catholic, he'd still be anti-homosexuality. Right? Like, I don't understand how that's not consistent. Like, that is super consistent. If he's bisexual and married a woman, he's known since middle school, by the way. Okay? and he has a relationship with her, then that's what it is. Now, if he comes out later and says, honestly, it's not, I, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this religion. Like, that's okay. He doesn't have to be religious. But while he's religious, he better be anti-homosexuality. See, I think you should be consistent. I want to see Catholics be anti-gay because you better follow the tenets of your religion. Also, I think we should dismantle religion because it's not real. But also, we th I think we should take away their tax exemption. But also, I think we should protect their civil rights. The problem is, is that... Is this a, because my, I don't like it. Like, I don't think it's good, you know, but there's a lot of queer Catholics. I don't know what to tell you. I was one of them. Hannah says it's spirit, it's spiteful and mean spirited, but I don't feel bad for him. Alice says, but a lot of people think being Catholic cancels out being queer. They do think that, which is so strange. I don't know why people think that, except to be fair, I do think the church even thought that to an extent because they didn't think being gay was real. Oh, okay. To be fair. Growing up, they would say being gay isn't real, but now they say being gay is real. You're just not supposed to act on it. So to be fair, the church did teach us being gay wasn't real, but now the church teaches that being gay is real. You're just not going to act on it. Taylor says, Chad, is it necessary to be homophobic in order to believe in Jesus Christ? Well, according to the construct, it's all a construct. It's a made up thing. It depends on who you ask. None of it is real. That's the problem. None of it is real. All of it is a construct. Queer Catholic cognitive dissonance. You can be a queer Catholic. Guys, queerness isn't a belief system. It's a way of being. That's like saying, like, being queer and Catholic makes a lot of sense. But I don't know if you guys come from a religious bubble to understand that the idea of religion is that God gives you burdens and crosses to bear that are the toughest. So if you're given a temptation like that, but you believe in God, it's just like your cross to bear. Like you have to jump into their bubble to understand how they think about why they're here on earth. They think they're here on earth to replace the souls that went to hell when, when Lucifer betrayed Christ or God, right? So imagine you're born into a bubble where you think you're put on earth for, like you have a mission and you got the hard cards, okay? Because you got the cards where you're like queer, which could be bisexual, which means you could still get married or be a nun. And then you have to play this game that's extra hard. And then you have to fulfill like that fallen seat. You have to fill that seat. So it's this idea of like being queer is just who you are. It's not the action. Being gay is not an action. It's just what you are. Like being straight isn't an action. It's just like who you are. But also it's all a construct. So none of this even matters. I don't know if people are willing to see the problem is like they don't want to believe it's a construct. They think it's true. They think it's super, super, super true. And because they think it's true, 
They don't like the idea of it being a construct, but that's, it just is. Kay says, maybe people think being gay is a belief. That's why they can't imagine being gay and Catholic because they see it as two countering beliefs rather than seeing them as a belief in an orientation. Yeah, probably. Yeah, definitely, right? That's probably the disconnect. Which to be fair, even I've said out loud, like you're gay, you can't be religious. But I don't mean that. I just mean like, why be a religious when you can be gay? But also you're always gay even when you're religious. Like you can't stop being gay. I'm happy for people's happy, but I doesn't have to be mine. And I think that's kind of the point I'm making. And then the question is, if we're looking at this guy and thinking like, this is crazy, what are we doing in our life that's kind of crazy? Or how do other people perceive us as like those weirdos over there? Because you know, somebody thinks you're weird. Somebody thinks you're this guy. So when you get like self-indulgent, you're like, I'm so smart. Remember, somebody's looking at you like you are telling women not to get jobs. Slash, that's not what he said, but you know what I mean. Colleen says he got a standing ovation. They loved it. It wasn't meant for the entire internet or even the entire modernized Catholic community. Lots of Catholics are modernized. Lots of Catholics only go to church when it's convenient. That's not who he was talking to. He was talking to devout Catholics, which is a very different game. And look, in 10 years, if he comes out as an atheist, him and his wife decide to leave the church, that's also valid. You can always change your mind, right? I don't want to bully people for changing their mind, but I want to live and let live. Mind your business. They need to mind their business. You talk about staying in your own lane. Catholics need to stay in their own lane and let the gays live their lives. My head in real life while I'm dead My belly's being fed and I'm okay I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah Sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Dun, 